Yeah. I know we just signed the deal, but I need my advance on the next. Hey, y'all. So I just wanted to get on here before this video starts and just give a little disclaimer that I am obviously not a medical professional. This is just all my experience, um, my personal experience, and what I think about this situation. It's a very sad situation um, for those that don't know what I'm talking about before we get started. Basically, a young lady um, on Facebook Live tried to commit suicide with her child in the car. And um, I don't know how the topic of postpartum depression came into play, but that's something that everyone was bringing up. Um, and like just to, to try to justify, I guess, um, why she did what she did. So um, these are just my thoughts um, and, and what I think about postpartum depression and my experience with that. So I hope you enjoy and make sure you don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you can keep up to date. Um, I'm not putting out no more perfect little videos, so. This is what y'all gonna be getting. This is me. I'm just gonna be on here talking and doing whatever I think, you know. So, hope you enjoy. I think it's touchy to talk about it with suicide and, and people's intentions because some of it, you just don't know how you feel. You don't know what's going on. You feel sadness. You feel overwhelming. Um, not grief, but like doubt of your um, future, of your possibilities, of your, um, of what you can get out of life is kind of what I personally felt like. I felt, you know, overwhelming sadness that you couldn't really explain to people. And I think that's part of why it's, um, it's difficult for people to talk about because you don't really know how to say how you feel. You don't you don't know what it, you don't know what's wrong. You don't know how to say what what's wrong. What 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 you're feeling. You don't know how to how to um. You just don't know how to tell people. And even if you could tell them, they'll just say pray. <laughs> I mean, and I did pray. I prayed. I read the Bible, but I still sometimes just felt a lot of sadness and it's because your hormones are still you still have a lot of hormone hormonal imbalance going on like you just had a baby and you're you're trying to bounce back basically without even if you're not trying to bounce back your body is naturally going back to your pre baby body like and so you have these carryover hormones that are just like fighting against that and remember, I'm saying all of this as someone who had lots of support. I had my friends. I had my child's father there with me daily. I had my parents' support. You know, I had a lot of support. And I still felt this afterwards. You know what I'm saying? So imagine somebody who has no support, who feels like the one person that they had, this man is what she was saying, you know, she fell in love with him. That was her one support system. So when she looked, when that's stripped away on top of all these things that she's feeling, what, what next steps can she take on her own with all these children and just herself to get herself together? Like, you know what I'm saying? Without that support, what is the expectation of how she should get herself together? Because if you go to the doctor, they just going to give you some pills. My doctor prescribed me some pills. I didn't even barely tell her that I felt no kind of way. And she prescribed me some pills. I didn't take them though. Because I just felt like my chemicals were already so imbalanced. I didn't want to mess it up more by, uh, by adding something else to it. Just so I could be, what, then numb to my own child? You know what I'm saying? Nah, I'm okay I, I was like, I just figured it out, you know, it, it'll, it will pass. And it did. Thank God by his grace, it, it did. But for some women, it won't. And, and like I said, with additional problems and things added on to it, that makes it just very, very difficult to. Um, 
And I'm in no way saying anything against anybody that does take medicine to help because it's they say it's a hormonal imbalance, so maybe medicine would help more. But for me, I just didn't want to take that pers that route personally. So, I mean, I just basically, I wrote, I wrote a lot in my, I don't have a, like a little book. <laughs> so I wrote in the notes in my phone, I wrote a lot of different things. What I was feeling, just, I just write it in there. I just type it in there so I could get it out because me personally, I couldn't talk to anyone. I just didn't want to talk to anyone about it. I'm a very private person. That's just the way I am. I, I didn't want to talk to nobody really about that in particular. That just wasn't something I, I was interested in talking to anyone about, <clears throat> which is not good. I understand. I'm, I'm very aware of that. It's very a very toxic trait of mine. I am very aware of that. And one day, I will get better at it. But this wasn't the experience that I could do that in. How the man contributed to her spiral. So. First of all, I'm not sure. I'm, they didn't make it clear whether they were uh, already disclosed that he was married before they got together or not. That's a detail that I personally didn't see. Um, and you don't, we don't really know what he did or didn't do. Only them two know. Married men, stop dating. Stop trying to talk to folk. Get a divorce if you don't want to be with your woman, like, or just be straight up because there's plenty of women out here that will still talk to you with a man, honey. They do not care. Word to Facebook. They don't care. These women do not care. So just tell them. Just straight up be like, I have a wife. I have a girlfriend. And if they still want to fuck with you, they'll fuck with you. And if they don't, then go to somebody else. Hell, stop ruining people's life. You know what I'm saying? Just stop ruining people's life. But um, that's just my answer. Y'all want me to answer whether or not I think it was acceptable that she killed her children or had her children in the car with her when she was attempting suicide. And I don't. Because for me, and this is for me because I can't speak on how she was feeling during her uh, her moment or whatever. I can't, I can't speak on that. But for me, anytime I look at my child, I feel better. You know, so I never, I'm not going to say I never felt that way, but I never felt like I wanted to harm my child ever. I never felt like I wanted to harm my child. So um, for that, I can't relate. And so because I can't relate, I don't think it's okay. Um, and I, and I think you can relate to something without it being okay. You know, you can relate to shit that's not cool. You can relate to things that's not uh, morally or, you know, a good thing to be a part of. Shoot. I can relate to the folks on Money Heist. But I ain't robbing no banks. You feel me? So, so I say all that to say that I do think that she needed help. She did need to speak with someone. She probably, to be honest, what she needed someone to take those children for a while. I'm not saying it had to be the government. But she needed somebody to come and give her a night off. And that's one thing that I can attribute to my sanity is that, you know, my family, my boyfriend's family, they will get Skylar. If we need need um, a night off, they will give us a night off. And that really helps because everybody need a break, you know. As a parent, you are, it's like, it is a job. You are working 24 hours a day you, from the time that child wakes up to the time they go to sleep and really after because you got to be prepared. You got to make bottles of think you know, until you have your own children. That's what I think. That, you know, since she survived, she should lose custody of her children. I mean, trying to, no matter what you're going through, there's no excuse for trying to end your child's life. So I just think, you know, that she should lose her children, unfortunately. And it's a very unfortunate situation because it could have been prevented is what I, why I say that. I feel like this situation could have been prevented in many ways if she just had to have somebody reach out to her. You know, just one kind word, one kind message. I cannot tell you how far it goes. It goes so far, especially during 
postpartum depression. It goes so far. One call, one text message, one girl, you got this. Girl, you're doing it. You know, you're a good mom. You're a great mom, especially from dads, from other people that um, don't see you, that may not see you on a daily basis with your child, but knows you've been holding it down. Like, just those kind of words, they really do help. Just somebody to come over, wash a couple bottles for you, you know, do a load of laundry for you, or just let you sit down for a minute. You know, in those in those beginning weeks, that stuff is very, very essential. So if you got a friend out there that's um, having a baby, I know, you know, COVID and everything like that, but it's nothing to, to uh, ask your friend what's their address and then have some food delivered. It, that's, it's nothing to do that. You know, it's hard for a mother to fix food, you know, clean up, just do all these things that is expected of us. And then even more, if she by herself and don't have no choice but to do it by herself, to be the only person to do it. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like, you know, lend out a hand, lend out a message to somebody that you may know that is um, a mother because it's hard. And, and fathers too, because who knows? Men might go through postpartum depression too. Well, not the chemical imbalance part, but... You know, just the life-changing part, you know? Because it's a, it's a very life-changing experience to have a child. That is just a life-changing experience for anybody involved. And, um, you know, you just we need to check on our people more. That's just what the moral of the story is. Check on your people. And, you know, postpartum is... Partially why these videos been slow, but also because, you know, I be trying to be perfect sometimes. I be trying to do stuff, you know, have stuff so perfect before I get it out. But you know what? I'm just going to start dropping stuff. Like, then just record it and drop it. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, then, you know, don't like it. If you're going through quarantine and you haven't had any depression, then that's, you know, a great thing within itself. But... I'm sure people have had quarantine depression. I'm sure that's got to be a thing because it is depressing to not have human interaction, to not, um, you know, just be by yourself all the time. That is depressing. So um, to add that on top of already having postpartum depression, you know, that is very, very difficult to deal with. And so I'm sure that probably adds to her stress as well. You know, so these are just all the things you got to think about in this story. And like I said, it's just a very sad situation. Um, and I'm glad that they survived. I'm glad that she has a chance to live again and hopefully get better. And one day be able to still have a relationship with her children. Because at the end of the day, every child needs their mother and father. And, you know, you never wish that on nobody. You never want nobody to be out of their mind to where they feel like they don't want to live or that they don't even more that they don't want their children to live. You know, that's, that's another level of depression. So, you know, check on your people. That's the moral of this whole story. Check on your people. And when people say that they're okay, they still probably not okay. So go above and beyond and do things that you would want somebody to do for you. And I also just wanted to like say to any mother out there that may be dealing with postpartum depression that you're not alone. You're, um, you know, you have people here that want to support you. Reach out if you can to someone, a friend, a professional, whatever you see fit for your particular situation, whatever you think that you need, do that. And, um, you know, doctors are not always right. Just remember that in your quest for peace and sanity during, um, you know, a shakeup in your life. Because that's really what it is. It's a, a, a total change of life. And, you know, it's normal. So just remember that in all this, that everything that you're experiencing is normal. You're not, um, you're not crazy. You're just a normal mother. And so I just want to say that as well.